I am Dennis Noble, Emeritus Professor of Cardiovascular Physiology in the University of Oxford, and I work on the heart. Well, first of all, it is the Journal of Physiology. It's the only one that has no qualification to its title. And of course, that's because it was the first Journal of Physiology starting in 1878. And it has been, of course, of seminal importance in so many areas. You go back to Bayliss and Starling. Um, you go back to almost any beginning of major physiological discovery. It's in the Journal of Physiology. And what I did, as a, even as an undergraduate student, I went thumbing my way through all of these volumes in the library, seeking what I could find out. What has changed my thinking is no single paper. I think it's more a progressive, over my career, a progressive understanding that's come from a whole range of physiological discovery. That in the end, although we need to know the molecular mechanisms by which everything works, we need to understand the interactions between the components of physiological systems even more. And it's the way in which the subject of physiology has developed towards that goal that has been the greatest influence on me. And in that respect, I can't point to any one paper and say, that's what did it. It's, it's something that's integrated out of the whole. Well, what is extraordinary is this. If you go to my paper in 1962, and you go to these citation graphs, you'll notice something very, very interesting. The citations, over a period of about 30 years, are modest. And then suddenly, from about the year 2000, it takes off enormously. This is a paper that is 50 years old. Now, what has happened? What has happened is that a community has grown up that is using the cellular reconstructions, the mathematics of how individual cardiac cells behave, to now put it all together into a reconstruction of how the heart as an organ works. And I think what is happening now is that physiology is becoming very rigorous and even at the level of the whole body with people trying to put together um, the systems of the body in mathematical form. What has happened I think over the last 10 years as those citations indicate is that the interest in doing this kind of work has suddenly taken off and it's only in the last 10 years that has happened. Actually, I would give this advice to a young scientist today. Get into physiology. Because if you ask the question, what is it? It is the logic of life. It is the logic of living systems. That's the origin of our word. Although we have sequenced the genome, although we've worked out how all of those proteins are coded for, in some cases, how they fold to produce the extraordinarily complicated structures they produce which then interact to produce the networks and so on up to the cells and organs and so on. Although we've done all of that, in the end if we don't understand how all of this interrelates in processes where all those components are taking part in the complex processes of life, we don't realize that life is a process and that that is looking at function, which is what physiology is about, then we're not addressing the question, what is life? So to any scientist, whether they call themselves a physiologist or not, I would say, get into physiology because that's where it's at now. <laughs>